Well, good afternoon, fellow YouTube auto repair folks. Uh, I'm going to put out one, maybe two videos, but I want to at least do this first one today. It's been a while since I've put things out, you know, due to the cold weather. And uh, this is my 2016 Toyota Highlander. It is the front wheel drive, has about 40,000 miles on it. I bought it used. This is January 2020. Uh, I had a 2013, but it was destroyed in a car accident back in November of 2019 when some guy rear-ended me at about 40 to 45 miles an hour. Literally, it tore the frame. It did not bend it. It tore the frame. So that pretty much totaled it. But one of the worst parts about that accident was the fact that the change drawer, which is down near your left knee, opened up, sent change all the way back to the third row seating. Uh, I will include this picture. I did suffer a minor injury. The fact that the change propelled so hard and so far to the back, it actually hit me in the forehead and created a small injury. Now, in my case, I cannot claim a neurological injury because my father always said I had rocks in my head. Therefore, I could not claim that. That's just the backstory. Uh, so today what I have here, again, is 2016, bought this used. It has the parking sensors. And I found that two of the parking sensors were not quite where they should be. All right, so on the front, and let's see if I can zoom in on this. On the uh, way over here, might be hard to see on the camera, but on that passenger side, it was pushed in slightly. Now, let's see if I can zoom in on this driver's side here. But you see the parking sensor there. Okay. Ah, that's better. So what happened is somehow uh, it got pushed in. It's basically a sensor that's been slid into a sleeve. And I'll show you to the front. I kind of lucked out. Because these, each of these sensors, the one here on the front, which is the passenger side, and the rear on the driver's side. I looked at it a little bit because they were on the sides. If you have to replace the two center ones, and, and maybe even this driver's side front, you may have to remove the bumper. Not hard, but just time consuming. Well, I, I lucked out. So, as it seems, I'll show you the inside of the car where the passenger side is on the front. The one on the left rear surprised me. Um, it took a little finesse because there's a box back there that you have to remove. Not so much that problem. Not a lot of room to work with. And I will show you how this sensor fits into a sleeve and how to take the sleeve out outside of the vehicle because it's just so much easier trying to do it in the cramped type of space. So hold on. Let me show you where this one sensor, all I had to do is actually push it back in place while this one sensor is sitting. All right, this is almost upside on your, uh, upside down on your head kind of situation. But again, you know, here's the uh, reservoir for filling up your windshield wiper fluid. There's your ABS unit. If you look down and way down here on the bumper, let's see if I can find it there. There it is. So if you look, you see that one sensor right there. See the wire running out of it? That's the one sensor that had been pushed back into the engine compartment. So I was able to reach down and push that one back. Now we'll go to the back. It's just a one wire sensor. It's an ultrasonic sensor. And there's four. Four in the front. I'm sorry, eight. Four in the front, four in the back. All right, let's go to the back. So that one has been working just fine. Here's the one on the driver's side rear. I've already taken it out. It's just kind of sitting in the bottom of that box. But please note the orientation. If you look very carefully, you'll see some notches at the top. There's a specific orientation as to the way this thing is placed back in there. Now, let me kind of crawl underneath and I'll show you the box we have to remove. All right, so again, kind of on my side and on my head, this is that driver's rear. This is the box that you have to remove. Requires a little finagling. There are some, uh, I believe, 10 millimeter bolts. God, I can't talk today. 10 millimeter bolts. A couple of the 
pins, you know, the little snap pins. You pull the head back, pop it out. Um, and a couple of bolts up under here that are actually plastic and do not come off of the actual box. They stay on. Um, I believe they were 12s. But once I get this apart, I'm not going to show you that. That's just boring. I will show you um, where those are at. Um, I believe in, again, some screws around the sides here. And just very delicately pull that out. It's pretty much identical on the other side. Now, here's the box I was talking about that's covering all this up. Requires a little finesse to get it out. Now, these are those two 12 millimeter plastic bolts I was talking about. Right here, there's one here and one here. Now, the trick is, too, when you, they don't come out because they're attached to the actual box here. What you have to do is, as you're unscrewing this, pull down. So, from underneath, you're going to have to pull in this direction to get those off. They're not as good as a regular screw or a bolt, but um, this is more a nut, I guess, if you want to be correct. You got to pull down a little bit. Then you have to work this box in and out, back and forth, and be careful because there are tabs on this end of the composite bumper, and you don't want to break those tabs. This is a composite bumper. Now let's go underneath. See if I can get you a good shot. All right, so if you look up through here, you can see my finger coming through. That's where the sensor snaps in to its sleeve. Now, the sleeve will come from the outside, the sensor pops in through the inside. And I'll show you how that works. Now, you see this right here? That was a little Christmas tree adapter. And it fits up in here on another wire. But in order to get into and round things, you had to pop that out. Now, it's one that it's not round. You have to get on either side and lift up, lift up and pinch it. And pop it out. Now, there's the actual sensor. See, this is the part you see the white part because you have to get a sensor to match your paint job that's the actual ultrasonic sensor and I'll show you uh, how that clip mechanism works in just a second so I'm gonna pull that out all right here is the plug now see where my thumb is at I can get my big fat thumb out of the way see that where my thumb is at you've got to push down there and there's a little tab on the sensor that snaps in that hole now one of the easiest things I've learned well two things really one don't be snapping things apart when it's less than 55 degrees the plastic will break and when I get stuff like this I shoot a little WD-40 or silicone spray in there and it makes it a little bit easier now this is tough so I pushed here where my thumb is pushing and I gently pulled now, what I also do is when I put sensors and stuff back in, I smear a little dielectric grease on everything. And hopefully, if you're the next person, if you have to pull it out again, it makes it easier. But there's the tab. And all that's going to be crammed up back in there. So let's look at the sensor. All right, let's try this again. The washer of my shorts and the queen of my double wide came in. So this is where the connector was here. Now let me turn it to the side, and you can see the tab there we go that's the tab right there where that connector from the car went this way sprayed some WD-40 and again I caution you do it when it's at least 55 degrees outside and this is the actual sensor a little WD-40 I pushed on the tab of the connector and it requires a little effort push in a little bit pull push in and it'll eventually pop out um, you could very carefully took a pair. Uh, you could could have taken a pair of pliers right here and pushed on that tab, but you do run the risk of breaking it. So I think I've got enough light there. Let's see. Okay, so there's the tab. Now here's the sensor itself, and if you look, 
The reason I changed it is the car was scuffed. Right here, you see the damage. And this silicon o-ring. I mean, it didn't damage the bumper. It just damaged this area here. So I wasn't, uh, I don't know, I wasn't quite convinced that this would, would stand up. But you can see the scuff mark right here. I was worried more about the silicon o-ring. And it surviving. And here is the little sleeve that goes in the car. And you can see where it was scuffed up. I could have probably done some touch-up paint, but the trick is when you put the sensor in and you have to put this into the car first because it's going to snap in to the bumper like that. And remember there was the flat spot at the top. It's going to fit only the one way into the flat spot. Then you're going to have to reach up in here and you're going to have to put in the sensor. Now let's see if I can find the tabs. All right, so here's one, and on the other side is the other. Now, I know that seems kind of strange, but there's only one particular tab for that to fit in. Oh, before I forget, because this is pressed into the car, you see these little tangs right here? What I had to do was take my pick and just kind of delicately pull back on those and work my way around this way to get this out. Now give me a second I'm going to show you how this fits into the actual mechanism here. Now here's the interesting part and be mindful of this. Trying to get these little tabs out. It can be done. I was able to do it but then again I got skinny mechanics hands. There are two, basically two clips here, you know, one on this side and one on this side. You see there, Let's see if I can get a little closer. So there's one, one, and there's the other. But when you place this back in the car, there's only one tab for this to fit over, and that is right there. You can see, here we go, there's not one on the opposite side, even though there are two slots for it, but you want to make sure that once you snap this back in, again, this only goes one way and it'll, it'll fit, when you snap this back in, that you make sure that this fits towards you. Okay, hard to mess up. But just want to let you know, when you first start digging this apart, you're going to find that, wait a minute, oh my gosh, I can't see that other tab. Well, there is no other tab on the other side. And here's the new part. You can see, so there's one right there. If you keep turning, so it's hard to mess up. But you're under the uh, pretense that there's one on each side, when there really isn't. Now, here's the new sensor. Again, my uh, car happens to be Blizzard Pearl, which is a white. So you got to make sure you get the correct color. And there's my new sensor, so when I put it together and I snap it in... It, gosh, got to get it in frame. There we go. See, and it'll fit this way. Now, here's something. All right, so if I went to the dealer and I purchased this, it'd be $212 plus 7% North Carolina tax. Well, of course, I try and order online. Well, there are a couple of dealers in my area, they're about 30, 40 miles away, that will sell it to you online. You can either pick it up there or um, you can have it mailed to you. Well, at the cost of this, it was better to have it mailed to me because it was a 35-mile drive one way. The problem is... If you order it online, some of these parts, and this came from Ontario, California, it was 160 for everything. But it took over three weeks. It was supposed to take four weeks. I don't know. Was this coming on the slow boat from China? I can't tell you. It did come in three weeks. So if you're going to replace this, make sure that um, you know that you uh, you can have the part readily available. But you know the difference between that 160 and 212 plus say another 
232 is substantial. So I waited. Now my car is smart enough to tell you when this will actually malfunction. It'll tell you on the dash that you have a malfunctioning sensor in a certain location. So what I did is keep water and stuff out. I put the box back in. I connected this and just left it in the box. Well of course when you hit reverse it will alarm continuously as if something is in the way. So it was a minor nuisance. Otherwise I've got that little warning on the dash when I put it in reverse. So to keep the water out I put the box back in. All right, let's go put this thing back in the car. Oh, don't forget, um, on these little tabs and things I was talking about, I'm going to put a little dielectric grease and a little dielectric grease in there. Keeps the water and stuff out. And makes it slicker. Oops, knocking my camera around here. Alright, so if you look here, there's a slot here and a slot there. Let's get closer. There and there. So when you get ready to mount this, the sensor will only go one way because that slot, there's one there and one up here. So it can only go one way. And that fits in like so. And it'll snap on. Now remember, there's only one side that has the tab. This one did not have it. So you want to make sure that tab is down. So that's going to be the rear of the car. This is going to be the front of the car. And then you'll plug in your adapter. Actually, I'll, I'll the, the power source. Actually, I'll plug the power source in first and then slide this in. Why? Because you want that tab here down so you can reach it and pull this out if you have to. Alright, as you can see, it's in. Now, I had to struggle with it. Again, there's not a lot of space in there. I'm trying to get my hand in there. Um, let's see, what I had to do, I was considered putting a piece of string in there and then pulling it up through here but I was able to get my hand back in here turn it and push it and snap it in so I was able to do it from two different directions this way okay let's see can you see that I think so yeah and then again it only snaps in according to those two grooves now the cord is back here and it actually loops around and it has one of his Christmas trees. That was the booger because it's kind of under tension. But the tab is on the bottom here. Both tabs, as a matter of fact, are on the bottom here so you can get this out again. That looks a whole lot nicer than it did uh, when I first bought the car. Here's one other little ding and there was one other ding some other place. But otherwise, a, a very good car. I just cranked it up before I put this box back together. Uh, I cranked it up and there's no... Uh, alarm actually indicator on my dash that says that this is not working properly. Uh, oh, one thing I wanted to tell you I'll have to. The bolts, let me get these bolts out of here. They're not all the same on this box. So let me get up here and show you. So if you look, they're not all the same length. Alright, so the most important part about this is to make sure that your box is up underneath everything. It uses that lip to hold it. Now, you know, there were the bolts I showed you and then here are the pins, you know, you take a screwdriver, pop it out. But let me show you, <clears throat> the one long screw goes up here now it looks kind of like oh man of course you can't get the light to stay still it looks a little bit like you know speed nut up here well actually that's pretty good light in there so up here this is toward the tire 
like a speed nut. That's the longest of those screws. Now, also, it slides in. So, like I say, when you take this apart and you jiggle it above here on this side, it's like a little clamp, get like a speed nut. So, you slide this lip into that and then you tighten it down. But that was the longest of those bolts. Same uh, diameter. So don't forget to put all those back in. There's what, four or five I showed you. And then don't forget the little plastic. Now these aren't really super secure. You know, the, the black plastic ones here I showed you. There you go. They don't really tighten down per se. They just eventually strip. But this is the protective box to keep everything clean and dry. All right, let me get back on my head or off my head, I should say, and standing upright again. All right, so let's look at some part numbers. Now, understand, you know, makes, models, trims, year of the vehicle can make a difference. And of course, these are color coded based on what the color, exterior color of your car is. Mine happens to be the Blizzard Pearl. So here's the ultrasonic sensor, 89341-0E010-A0. And it came in that uh, Blizzard Pearl. Oh, that's why it took so long. It had to come from Mexico. Huh. Thought it was coming from China. I, I'm just, I'm a little disappointed in Toyota taking that long to get it to me. Oh, uh, let's see. Then here, I went ahead and got two of the retainers, they call them. Retainer ultrasonic sensor. Again, painted uh, pearl white. I mean, if you wanted to cheat, if you had the... Uh, a darker color or something you could get the exterior trim uh, paint at the dealership it's kind of pricey you know comes in a little can you know touch up stuff you could probably do that 89348-0E010-A0 the only difference uh, 8934 was that number right there they call it a retainer um, Again, tool-wise, it took you know a couple of extensions, quarter-inch drive, 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter, a long pick, maybe a small screwdriver, some WD-40 regular screwdriver, maybe a pair of pliers, and a long cabinet maker screwdriver. You know, those, let me show you. <clears throat> Excuse me. The uh, grease, the dielectric grease was my own. That's a cabinet maker screwdriver. Um, Lots of patience, your favorite beverage, lots of light. And uh, like I say, it can be done, well, at least on this driver's side in the rear, without having to take the bumper off. Um, I hope this helps save you some money, because it sure saved me a bunch of money. And I just didn't like the way it looked. It just looked bad. And I mean, it, it, it was enough that it did not tear up the composite bumper, just that sensor. I could have gotten away, maybe, with some touch-up paint on that, but I'm not sure about that silicone seal. So I just went ahead and changed everything. Well, let me go work on the second project here, and that is wiring up my next base dash cam to hot power all the time. And let's see if I can maybe video that also. So just remember my mantra. I'll fix your car, but it won't go far.